Hello everyone, welcome back to the Gundam Close of View. Seeing that I don't want to burn myself out, it took a little bit longer to put everything together for this model kit. Before you enjoy this review, feel free to check out the ASMR build video of this model kit. If that slipped through your notification, the link is on the upper right corner. Today we are going to look at the model kit whose name is related to a term dragon. Not one dragon, but two. Yes, the model is the 1100 Master Grade Ultron Gundam version EW. Which I learned from my research, the term Ultron is based on the Chinese term Er Tou Long, which means two headed dragon. The pilot is Chang Wu Fei, a martial artist with a Chinese background. And we know there are two versions of this model kit that have been introduced so far the TV version and the redesigned EW movie Katoki version. So far for the Master Grade line, we only see the release of the Katoki version and it was a pre-Bandai release. So what we are looking here is a snap build finished product with panel lining and out of the box water slide decal. Of course, to keep the decal sticking, matte top coat was applied. Bandai provide us some extra decal for customization as well. Personally, I adjust some decal position and add on those extra and the result is very pleasing. Especially the one on the dragon fang. No worry, I will point out each of them throughout the review. So as always on our left is the box art. Unfortunately, similar to all the premium Bandai release, we only have a monochrome color box here. This is a snapshot of the fight scene between the Ultron and the Wing Zero custom where Wufi tried to prevent Hero entering the Earth. Therefore, we can see the Wing Zero is wielding a saber in defense mode on the corner over here. Back to the Ultron, the mobile suit is leaning toward the Wing Zero with the right dragon fang wide open. The swinging illusion is very natural. On the other hand, the twin's beam trident is also activated but resting and waiting for his turn to be shined. The detail that justified this to be called Vertical is all the marking decal that you can spot it all over the model kit over here on this box art. This is exactly how the model kit presented as an out of the box finished product. Moving to the right, we have all the weapon and accessory coming with the model kit. One twin beam trident, two beam effect part, two dragon fangs and two display stand, additional joy for the dragon fang, a swappable finger with content one set of open hand, one set of glow feast, one set for the single hand holding, and one set for dual hand holding. So question time, is this 2015 model still good to buy? If so, should you include this into your collection? It is hard to deny that the Ultron is very unique mobile suit. Its main selling point are the green color theme plus the dual dragon fang. For color, we can replicate, but for the dragon fang, it would take quite some time and effort to recreate. So let's have a closer look at the overall detail, starting with the weapon. So let's first visit the main melee weapon of the Ultron. We have here is the Twins Beam Trident, which is an upgrade version of the regular Beam Trident or Beam Glaive. Mine come a little bit bended, but no big deal, just more dynamic for my finished product. Mostly great, so definitely apply on for decal on the tips of each area. One thing we need to pay attention to here is that little extra pieces. Please make sure you don't overcut when trimming the part from the runner. I make a mistake on one side of the tips, even though it doesn't impact the overall look of the trident, but just be aware. The Trident Beam Effect part is pretty unique. The texture is similar to the Beam Sword from Epion, of course with a smaller scale, but the shape is totally different. Transparent green plus spiky edge. It can be blocked directly to the tip of the handle. Of course, we have two of them, so one on each side to form the Twins Beam Trident. When not in use, we can store this on a backpack using the peg on the middle of the handle. Bandai provides us two pieces over here, one is just the regular cover on the backpack and the other one with the connection peg. Personally, I only keep the one with the connection peg. Usually the swappable finger aren't being utilized much, but that was not the case for the Ultron. With the Twins Beam Trident, 3 out of 4 sets are helpful to create dynamic weapon pose. First we have the single hand holding set, which has a peg to secure the weapon while we're using one hand to hold the weapon. However, the position is actually fixed sideways, which is a little bit odd. So along with this, we have the dual hand holding set. This is similar to the single hand holding, but it doesn't have the pack at all. So the weapon can be positioned pretty much in any direction. 
However, it won't be as secure as the other set. Just be patient with this. Uh, the other set that can be used here is the open hand set. It can be combined with either one of the mentioned set to create more post style. Next, we have the iconic weapon of the Ultron, the Dragon Fang. For the version of the Ultron, the Dragon Fang has a brand new design. It isn't as bulky as the regular version and is connected to the forearm through an extendable joint instead. So be gentle with the plastic while posing because the material is quite cheap. So stretch mark here and there can be spot uh, after just a couple poses. For the original design, the Dragon Fang extends along with the hand which has two major issues. If the Dragon Fang was destroyed, then and there goes the hand. The second issue is the limited expandable parts are stored on the shoulder, which result in a very bulky and odd shoulder armor. So back to the design of this dragon fang. Rather than having an up and down fang, we have a sideways close up fang. Each fang is connected to the main body with two swivel joints, so it can be opened up quite wide. The color separation is very decent. We have the red fang, yellow jaw, black eye, green head, dark green neck, wide wing and then the red body. Most of the panel light work is on the wing and the fan. For the sticker, we have the four black eyes so if you plan not to use them, go ahead and paint the inner frame of that. In terms of decal, the majority of the decal we see here are from the instruction except the kanji over here and the straight line decal over here on the head. The kanji was part of the decal number 53, which I cut in half and placed one on each fang, similar to the shoulder. And the straight line is decal number 33, which fit perfectly. Next, we have the additional joy for the dragon fang body. So beside the 5 joy that given, Bandai also give us 10 more joy. We can mix and match to show different length of each fang for dynamic pose, of course. 5 additional on each size or only in one size or all the combination that can fit the pose. The dragon fan can be cheated to pose airborne like how I did it in this picture over here or we can just rest them in the display stand that come with the model. It can be connected at the bottom of the fan. Unfortunately, the display can only do one fixed pose. If Bandai make this as a ball joy or extendable or stackable display that would be much appreciated and the playability is gonna be much more better. Personally, I think this design is more like a dragonfly to me because of the four wings on the back. So moving on with the model, starting with the lower body. Let's have a look at that. And first we have the waist. On the front side and back skirt have their front side constructed with two pieces would make it easy for customization to create a two-tone green if you would like to. For mobility, the front skirt can go sideways a bit and go up quite high, but it is limited by the app armor. Side skirt armor is connected through an outer ball joint, so it does not have any limitation at all. The back skirt armor is similar to the front, which can be limited by the app for some pose. However, they can all be adjusted to fit. Not so much room for panel lining over here, but decal is a ton. Make sure you apply them all. The kanji here is supposed to be on the back. I just prefer to have it displayed up front. Because just be real. We rarely really display the back of the Gundam. Let's deep dive into the leg. The thigh is pretty basic. No armor split or any fancy decal. However, there's an inner frame gimmick where we bend down the knee. If you're into inner frame painting, this part is a separate pieces, so it is convenient to paint. Moreover, the hip joint is very impressive. It can be opened pretty much flat, like this. Okay. Moving down to the knee, it can bend almost 180 degree. Along with that, the knee armor is also moved along with the bend. This is something we don't see on the wing zero. The knee armor is mostly white or I would say the whole leg is pretty much white and it relies heavily on the decal to add on more detail and color. Definitely do panel line and decal on the leg. A couple area on the knee that give out the fan feel here and here and it fit in pretty well with the overall model. Down to the feet, the ankle armor is a little bit too bulky which hinder the mobility quite a bit. It can slightly rock left and right Again, mostly white with red decal. The front decal is about to be on the back. Again, I just put it in the front. 
the feet is the only area we can see the very very dark blue color. So yep, put on those white decal. The front vent over here is a separate part, so if you want to touch up with silver, they make it easy for you. Alright, moving up to the upper body. The aft armor connects through the double ball joints, so it can rock left and right a little bit. Even though it can really turn 360, it can achieve a decent turn until the arm armor hit the back's waist armor. Next is the torso. The light green armor from the torso, front running down the aft, really add on a bit of color flavor to the model. The whole pieces light up with the front waist armor as well, which look pretty neat. Back to the torso, this is just a recolor of the Shenlong Gundam. The design replicate the Asian Chinese warrior armor, which gives the illusion that the whole armor is hanging by these two rings. The red in the middle and the yellow edges are a nice touch. Combining with all the decal along the edge, the look is quite flavorful. On the back, we have a very very simple backpack. It's even simpler than the RX-78-2 backpack, because it doesn't even have the beam saber. If you are bored, you are also welcome to add those decals following the instruction, just like how I did over here. Next, we have the hand. Shoulder are pretty basic, but they are constructed by many pieces since this is a redesign. This design is similar to the Shenlong EW version. However, we have quite a bit of decal to make up for the solid dark green. Bandai gave us an option on the shoulder kanji decal. Either we use 55 and 56 versus 53. I personally pick 55 and 56, then use 53 for the customization on the Dragon Fang. The shoulder joint is perfect for the Ultron. The extended joint helps to increase the mobility for the whole model while posing the Dragon Fang. Arm is similar to the thigh which has white armor pieces. Forearm and palm are all dark green, plus some white decal. In terms of mobility, the elbow bend is a little bit limited, but the range is good enough for posing. One thing that we need to pay attention here is that the part that used to connect the dragon fang will hit the forearm quite a bit. So as you can see, my top coat is already scratched. So maybe try semi-gloss or gloss so it won't look this obvious. And moving to the head, out of the 5 man wing mobile suit, the Ultron head is very similar to the Wing Zero custom head except the two fang detail on the side head armor. Also, the wing tail is a little bit smaller as well. In here, definitely credit to Bandai to having the side Vulcan built in with the inner frame, so we don't have to color it. And by the way, these two decals here are my personal touch on the head. Those are extra as well. So in conclusion, even though this model was released in 2015, the base, inner frame, or pretty much the whole body is a recolor of the Shenlong Gundam EW, which was released in 2011. However, saying that does not mean this is a bad model kit. The Shenlong itself is a very decent model. So building up based on a decent model kit, we have a fairly decent product over here as well. The two Dragon Fang design plus the color is distinct enough to justify this purchase. The only thing that would hold people back is the price. As a premium Bandai product, collecting this is a little bit tough. However, I noticed that Bandai reprint this model quite often, so next time, if there is a reprint and pre-Bandai open up on your region, definitely grab it. But for now, maybe you want to shop around for a decent price. If you think this version of the Dragon Fang is not good enough, another competitor is the Supernova version of the Ultron, which has a modified Dragon Fang. It's actually a combination between the Shenlong Dragon Fang and the Ultron Dragon Fang, of course, with a lot of mix and match. Overall, this is a good model, and I'm happy to add this into my own collection. If you run into one with a good price, I would definitely recommend you to go for it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, share, and hit the notification button. Bye bye, and I will see you next time.